Hello watch enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. In the field of watchmaking, as it is in the automotive world, or indeed any other, it's hardly uncommon to witness press beratement when presented with a new and seemingly misplaced product. Such was the reception of the 2015 Petit Philippe reference 5524, taking on the complication of travel time with an unusual triple crown arrangement, this watch was, for the first time from Patek Philippe, a pilot's watch. Since this release, the pilot's watch from Geneva's most celebrated watchmaker has taken on forms ranging from a simple three-hand arrangement to a complex and highly unexpected alarm. Despite this obvious goodwill from the core of Patek, the pilot's watch has never really overcome the initial stigma it faced five years ago, yet I believe that this simply doesn't tell the whole story. Join me today to find out how this watch means much more than it first presents. Perhaps it could even be categorised as a truly groundbreaking release from the Stern family's brand. So why did Patek Philippe choose to release a very classical and clearly vintage inspired pilot's watch in 2015? Well it certainly wasn't because of much of an aviation history. Patek Philippe, founded in 1839, was never a brand for professionals. Professional businessmen or industrialists, yes, but professional sportsmen, explorers or pioneers, no. Therefore, the question clearly stands, why did Patek Philippe go down the route of this watch? Before dismissing their endeavours completely, they did have a few dalliances with pilot's watches in the 1920s and 1930s, but none lasted beyond the Second World War, despite a rather delightful 1936 hour angle watch. Perhaps this lack of focus on such a market was unsurprising. After all, in 1932, Patek Philippe changed hands and took direction from the Stern family, which continues to run the company today. At that time of change, ensuring command of a well-known market was crucial, and so with the Calatrava Reference 96, Patek cemented themselves as the reference in dress watch making. So what is the answer to the question posed earlier? Well, you can look at this in one of two ways. The first is that Patek Philippe, being an undeniably astute company, recognised that sports watches and all things vintage were extremely popular and decided to wade in with their own offering. The other is that Patek Philippe took the opportunity to add imagination to their range. Of the two, the second is by far the more interesting to ponder. If you're enjoying this video, please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon and head over to watchchronicler.com to catch all the latest podcasts, articles and much more about the watches you deserve to know about. Also remember that you can always find us on Instagram where you'll see regular updates about the watch world. Returning to the focus of this video, Consider Petit Philippe's position. This is a brand known for high horology dress watches and displays of superlative watchmaking. Such watches rarely provide the opportunity to experiment, and even when they do, for example in the case of the Calatrava 6007A, the formula is clearly rooted in market interests, i.e. stainless steel, blue dials, and the rest. With the Pilot's Collection, on the other hand, Petit apply their know-how to something new and genuinely exciting. With that initial release in 2015, Patek Philippe showed a watch in which there was some real extremity. This was a watch which was first a legible tool for travelling, and secondly a Patek Philippe. Its 42mm size gave it a well-spaced layout, whilst the dark dial and luminous markers afforded it legibility on and off the wrist. Of course you may be wondering why the Nautilus and Aquanaut don't fall into the same category of sporting Patek Philippe. Of course they do, but not in the same way as the Calatrava Pilot. The Nautilus was famously designed in minutes and released in 1976 to cater to a new market, the market for a luxury steel watch. Its sporting characteristics were secondary and judging by its more frail competitor, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, usually unnecessary. The Aquanaut on the other hand was launched to appeal to a very different market of young millionaires in the midst of the dot-com bubble. At 35.6mm to the 375 of the Nautilus and not designed by Gerald Genta, it wasn't meant to replace the Nautilus, but instead was designed to appeal to a new, younger market. The Calatrava Pilot, though, is comprehensively different. Let me show you why. In 2015, the Pilot launched not in a simple three-hand configuration, but as the 42mm watch with a complex travel time system, which was the reference 5524. Built on the base of Petex 324 automatic movement, this added two locking pushes to the left-hand side to advance and reverse the travel time hand, itself able to be hidden under the hour hand. Two day-night indicators allowed 24 hours to be displayed on both hands. Consider this a GMT+. 
Today this is available in white or rose gold, as well as in the smaller 37.5mm reference 7234, which was launched in unlimited form earlier this year. In 2017, the next chapter was launched, but as if teasing its clientele, in limited edition of 600 pieces exclusively for the US market, and with no clear intentions of ever appearing again. This was the reference 5522A, a slimmer, time-only steel version of the 5524. Obviously this was an appeal to the desire for steel luxury watches at the height of this market's buying power. Even so, the 5522 represented a final proof that Patek's formula for a pilot's watch was a successful one. It also reminded one of the very artifice which was Patek's pilot's watch. Here was the most distilled version of their creation of what would have been a vintage pilot's watch on the wrists of aviation pioneers in the midnight skies of North Africa or the Andes. Launched in 2019, the most recent and complicated version of this watch is the reference 5520P, a model only available in platinum and with a truly superlative level of complication at its core. Derided by many for its arachnoid appendages in the form of eight protrusions, if you include the lugs, this is probably the most accomplished pilot's watch available. For a couple of hundred thousand euros though, this should come as no surprise. At 42.2 millimeters, this watch retains much of the same dial layout as the 5524, but now in pure black rather than the dark blue of the aforementioned version. Above the date subdial, a digital time display is visible alongside what looks like another day-night indicator. In fact, these display the alarm function of this watch in a thoroughly unusual way, but surely not as unusual as the way the alarm itself operates. At the heart of the 5520P is the hardly memorable caliber AT30-660 SCFUS, a movement which uses a minute repeater mechanism to sound the alarm. This, I hasten to remind you, is a complication generally regarded as being far more complex than a tourbillon and even a rung above a perpetual calendar. In it is the quintessential inertial governor which controls the chiming by allowing weights to move outwards when spun, whilst the actual sound of the alarm is no crude buzzing, but an elegant chime from a hammer striking a gong. This is, if you will, deciding to use a handmade katana passed down through generations and kept in the finest condition in the place of a machete to hack through the jungle. Whilst undoubtedly profligate, you can't deny that using a minute repeater mechanism instead of a buzzing alarm both sounds better and shows a truly elevated level of watchmaking. Let's at least call it a charming idiosyncrasy as a profoundly subtle way to elevate this watch which goes far deeper than adding diamonds or rose gold. If you look at this watch in relation to the collection, it shows Patek's confidence in the Calatrava Pilot, given the elevated status of such a movement and the wonderful treatment it's received in this timepiece. So does the Patek Philippe Calatrava Pilot truly deserve the celebration which I give it here? Well, it isn't as detailed or as historically important as other Patek Philippe models, yet it has shown a crucial aspect to this brand. When they want to do something new, they show no lack of ability. In this regard, the Petit Philippe Calatrava Pilot is a triumph. But what do you think? If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. This is Armon from watchchronicle.com. Out.